Let's join together, those of you at home, come on, stand in the living room. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. So come on, let's come together in this place. Let's lift our hands, lift our voice, and proclaim the goodness of our God. Here we go, come on, let's all sing together. Now is the time. Now is the time to make a stand, to rise up and take the promised land, to walk in the favor of our God. I love this, come on. Lift up your eyes and see the King upon you. over our situations and circumstances. We worship you, Lord. We know now is the time to make a stand. Lord, if this world ever needed a pouring out of your spirit, it's now. Lord, if this world has ever needed a touch of your glory, it's now. Lord, if our churches have ever needed a move of revival, it's now. Lord, because we look to you, the author and the finisher. Come on, I wonder if you'd help me this morning. I wonder if you'd help me today. Just forget about everybody around you. Forget about everything around you for a few moments. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We magnify your name and glorify you. You alone are worthy to be praised. 
Come on, let's fill this place with the praises of God. Come on, let's fill this place. Come on, that means you. Those of you at home, come on, let's fill your homes with the praises of God. Come on, this is not a show. This is not a concert. Let's all lift our voice to Him. That's it. Come on, go ahead. That's it. Sing glory and honor. We sing glory and honor. We sing glory and honor to your name. You are great, oh God. You are great, oh God. You are great. You are great. You are great, Lord. Our Father, Creator, you hold our hearts together. There's no one higher than you. Come on, can we all sing it together? Redeemer, Defender, our great and mighty Savior. There's no one higher than you. You are always with us, gracious to forgive us. By your power, we've been set free. Come on, can we all sing together? some help with this part. Come on. There is no this place and a few folks at home that are not ashamed and that are not discouraged and that would help me and help us all declare that there is no one higher there is no one greater come on there is no one higher no one greater no one like our god there is none more able christ our savior great and glory come on somebody help me there is no one higher no one greater Come on, 
sing it out. Come on. There is no one higher, no one greater, no one like our God. There is none more able, Christ our Savior, great and glory has. Come on, let's all sing together. Lord, we stand. Lord, we stand amazed in your presence. Astounded by your mercy and love. Hands are lifted high in surrender. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Your grace for me is always enough. Come on, sing if you know if it's true. There is, no, there is no one higher than our God. There's no one greater, Jesus. There is no one greater than you. Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one. Are you ready for the word today? Let's stand. Open your Bibles with me. Go over to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We've been in a series called Thy Kingdom Come, praying for God's kingdom. This is how he told us to pray. And um, there's so much I can say about the kingdom. It was the main theme of Jesus' ministry. And so we're going to be talking about it for the next several weeks um, as we go through this. Because in order to make a difference in the area of sex trafficking, of anything in our country, we need the kingdom of God in us and to work through us. That's what Jesus did. When he did miracles, he told his disciples, when you go and do miracles, tell them the kingdom of God has come upon you. Inside the kingdom of God, as I told you, it's the spiritual reality available to all people who make Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord. And within that kingdom comes the covenants, the blessings, the power, the authority. Jesus said, I give you all authority over the works of the enemy. I give you, Peter, the keys to the what? To the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom of God. As you study the four, first four books of the New Testament, you will read that over and over again. All of Jesus' parables were about the kingdom of God. And so here in chapter Luke, uh, of chapter 4 of Luke, Jesus is announcing that he is the Messiah. This is the long-awaited day for God's people. They've been waiting for the return or for the revealing of the Messiah, just like we are waiting for the return of the Messiah. There was a remnant of people who were faithful coming to church, studying the Word of God. Others made idols out of everything from their lineage to their uh, academics. We've been talking about that. But this faithful remnant, remnant was waiting for the Messiah, and they heard John the Baptist talk about, here he comes, and he said that I baptize you with water, but there's one coming mightier than me whose sandal straps I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Fire. And they didn't really understand all of that. They had an understanding of the book of Malachi in the Old Testament where he talked about fire and, and being baptized in fire, how it purifies us from the inside out. And so here's the big day that Jesus, he comes and he announces, I am the Messiah with his very first message that he ever preached in a synagogue. We learned last week uh, on the message of the kingdom that Jesus' first message was to what? to repent and believe and he preached that in the streets now he's in church for the first time and we see in verse 14 then jesus returned everybody say then, then. this is the reason why we're going to start off with this normally you don't start off reading with then then jesus returned in the power of the spirit to galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. When you walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the word gets out. 
People are a little bit impressed that you're watching us today. People are a little bit impressed that you're going to church. People are usually happy for you. You're turning your life around. But you really want to start building a new reputation to make heads turn and people start talking is when you start walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you start having a change happening in your life, then they go, oh man, he's not just going to church, he's becoming the church. This Jesus isn't like all the other rabbis. This guy has power. Look at that. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And it was his, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So Luke is writing this from way past this, and he's recalling what happened. And he's basically saying, Jesus began a pattern of every Sabbath being in the going to church. How many has a pattern? Many of you, you have a pattern. You're here today. Amen. Jesus practiced a pattern of faith until they kicked him out, which is right after this sermon. Anyway, he said, and he stood up and he read, just like we're standing and reading. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. It was a scroll. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Everybody say anointed. anointed. Look at the person next to you and say, you're anointed. anointed. Drop that in the chat today. I'm anointed. He says, I am anointed. You're going to understand that here in just a moment. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To recover sight to the blind, both physical and spiritual blindness. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were upon him. So you may be seated just as he was seated. Lord, continue to bless our hearts as we hear in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And he gives a list of what the anointing does to, to go into the highways and byways and bring the ministry of God. That's, that's what we're, we're called to do. So today I want to talk about the ministry of the kingdom for just a few minutes. The, the ministry. Well, last week was the message. This week is the ministry. What, what is the, the ministry of of the kingdom. What does being a part of the kingdom do? One of the first things that you should be asking yourself after you become born again, as many did last week, and here recently you've become born again. Well, you soon need to start asking yourself, what can I do? Have you found yourself with that? That's the Holy Spirit in you wanting to do something for the kingdom of God. We are not saved by doing good works, but once we are saved, we should want to do good works. You are not saved, by grace you are saved, not by works lest any man should boast, but you are prepared for good works. So that's what we're, we're going to talk about here. And you need the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You can do good deeds in your own will and in your own ability for only a certain amount of time. But to really impact culture and to really impact society as Jesus did. And as the early church turned the known world upside down, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we would have, instead of riots, we would have revival in the streets. How would that happen if we would do what Jesus did to go and to say, hey, we are walking in justice, we are wanting justice, mercy, and, and the kingdom of God to come into this place. And he preached a gospel of power and of unity, and he lived it out. That's what we're wanting. What is the anointing? The anointing is many different ways I could give it to you, but let me just give you this simple explanation. It's the favor, power, and enablement by the Holy Spirit to do a task. That's what the anointing is. It's favor. Everybody say favor. It's favor. You could just be an employee of a Fortune 500 company, and if the favor of God is upon your life, you could be more blessed than the owner of that company or the CEO of that company. If you are just a janitor in a company, if you've got the favor of God on your life, it will go better for you and with you in that company. Favor opens up doors. 
Favor is what will give you opportunities and people will just see a difference on your life. When I got saved, I, immediately I began to show up for once on Monday on time. I wasn't hung over and I was there on time at work. And, and, and the bar is so low in our society when it comes to, to, to work. Isn't it right? Sometimes if you just show up for 30 days and do what you're called, you'll get a raise. How many uh, business owners are like, yep, preach it. Amen? And I, it was amazing how God just begin to change my life. Favor was on my life. I was being offered different positions. I would take a route in, 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 the, in the business, whether it be Flint or Toledo. Those were the two uh, worst routes in our company, delivering bread and intimates. And, and I would get stuck because I had low in seniority and I'd be stuck doing one of those routes. And, and all of a sudden, a Walmart would open on that route. A Costco would open on that route. And, and it would just, and I'd build it up. They would go, how do you do that? I said, I don't do it. It's the favor of God. It's just and then someone with more seniority would bump me off that route. Isn't that just how it goes? But it's favor, so I would go to my next assignment. And it's the favor. When you got the favor of God on your life, people will come up to you and will ask you for things. Like the rich young ruler came running to Jesus and said, Man, there's something about you. What can I do to have what you have? And Jesus told him, In order to be a follower of me, you got to go sell everything you have. Give the money to the poor, and then you'll have riches in heaven. And he was like, whoa, I can't do that, and he went. But we're talking about following Christ. But receiving Christ costs you nothing, but becoming like Christ will cost you everything. The anointing is favor, it's power, it's enablement. Luke 2 tells us that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So you can grow in your anointing. Everyone that was born again, everyone that is, the, from the moment you became born again, the Spirit of God came into your life. And the light of God, I, be, I believe in the spirit realm, every believer is light. I believe the enemy sees you the moment you get saved. First, uh, John chapter 1 says Jesus came and he was the light of men and he gave light to every man. And so... And again, back if you look at the, the teaching of about light, Jesus talked a lot about light. They didn't have DTE 2,000 years ago or GE. So light means what? What kind of light did they have? Fire. Another analogy of the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, a flame is lit, in, is lit within you. When you are born of the Spirit, a flame is lit within you. I want to talk to you today about how to fan that flame, how to let that flame, fame, you, you can feed a fire. You can grow in that anointing. You can grow in that anointing. When I first got saved, I had a, a, a guy call me from a, uh, a church, and he, would, he knew I could play drums. I grew up playing drums in the church, and he asked me to come play drums for him. It was affiliated with our church. It was another location. I was on a phone 45 minutes with that guy, telling him every reason why I could not do it, scared to death, terrified, terrified. He's like, oh, man, you can play. And back in the day, our songs were very easy. You know, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord. You want to speed it up? This is the. <laughs> and, and, and you want to really let the Lord move and do those A minor songs. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Those Jewish songs. Woo. Tamarines going, amen. Woo. I mean, that's what the spirit really moved when you hit that A minor. Come on, somebody. Sound the alarm on the holy mountain. Woo! People. Now you just play anything at that moment. You're hitting anything. And sometimes a guy banging on the pews louder than your drums. But when I got saved, 97, Hillsong was coming out. Brownsville Revival, Linda Cooley was coming out. These news, uh, every revival will bring a new sound. I believe one of the most powerful albums out there is, is uh, Gardens, Graves in the Gardens by Elevation. Man, what a powerful. But there's tons of anointed worshipers right now that are getting new songs during this year. And that tells me revival is on the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because they heard a sound from heaven before the presence of God came. A sound comes before the Spirit of God comes. Amen. And so he's on the phone telling me to come play drums, and I, I hung up the phone by telling him I'm going to pray about it. You know what is so sad? I spent about an hour up in my prayer closet praying before he called about, God, please use me. <laughs> Sometimes we mean God use me if it involves and we have an agenda. But God says, are, are you willing to clean the church? Come on, somebody. Are you, are you willing to wash feet? You notice there's never been a foot washing conference? 
I'm just saying, we kind of, you know, make something big out of something that should be minor. And, and, but I, I want you to see something. Growing in my anointing, I soon begin to get involved in, in, in ministry. And I went from being so afraid to stand in front of somebody to this. How? You grow in your anointing. Some of you, if I handed you the microphone and just said, share your story, you would have a heart attack. But I want you to know, get to, re, re, grow in your anointing. Rehearse the, your story. You ever rehearse a conversation to a job interview or something? Rehearse your story. Talk about it. Amen. Let's move on. Jesus grew in his anointing. There's the three things real quick, very valuable about the anointing the, that I want to give you. The first one, the most important the first ministry of the Holy Spirit is to enable us to become like Christ. Before you lay hands on the sick, before we go and do anything, the Holy Spirit wants to do a work in us before he works through us. The very first place you see this is when Jesus called his disciples. And he said, as he walked in Mark chapter 1, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, watch this, and I will make you become fishers of men. He said, I'm not going to show you and tell you to fish. I'm not going to tell you where to fish. I'm not going to tell you how to fish. I'm not going to tell you uh, what scripture verse to read. I'm not going to tell you uh, what to say, what not to say. I just want you to follow me. And as you focus on me and imitate me, you become like me. Yes. Christianity is not about doing. It's about becoming. Once you become, you will start to do. Jesus said on the day of judgment, what did he say? You guys know that scripture, Matthew chapter 7. On the day of judgment, many will come to me and say, Lord, light, Lord, Lord, did I not do these great, great things for you? Did I not do this? Did I not do that for you? And Jesus said, I'm going to tell you plainly, depart from me, you who practice iniquity, for I never knew you. No relationship. That's a scary and sobering verse. In other words, you married me, took my last name, but went out and continued to live your own life. We never fellowshiped. We never got to know one another. Christianity, and the, when you get saved and you're born again, your first mission is get to know Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, the anointing comes upon you, and he helps you do that. That's why you start reading the Bible, and it starts making sense to you now. You don't understand everything because you've got to grow in that anointing. You've got to grow in your understanding, as Paul wrote in Ephesians. I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be opened. Peter tells us to continue to focus in on what? On the light, on the fire of God's word until it lights in our hearts. You grow in that anointing, but you start to, you start to want to change what is happening. You're becoming just like a baby when a baby is born. As the baby grows, it becomes like its parents. You can go into our river kids when they're open, and you can look around at them kids, and you can go, man, I know exactly whose kid that is. It looks just like them. I know whose kid that is because it looks just like mom and dad, right? It's in the genes. It's also in the behaviors. You can, you can have a child that you have adopted into your family, and as that child grows, it learns your ways, and it learns how to what? Become a Markham, for instance. And it be why? Because it's in the family. It's it's always around the family. It's learning the ways. I have a saying in my family that I raise my daughters. This is the this is the Markham way. This is how we do. On Sundays we go to church. Uh, during the week we we still are in the Word. We we live this out the best we can. We're not perfect, but we are what trying to become like Christ. And you can't do this part without the Holy Spirit. You can't quit. You can't be good enough. You can't clean yourself up. You can't be holy. You can't do anything on your own. It's all flesh. It'll fail and you'll be frustrated and worse off than when you started. But when the kingdom of God comes into your life and when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you will soon start to walk in power and authority and be able to bring change. See what I'm saying? I tried to quit a couple of habits before I got saved. I knew, you know, you're not supposed to be doing some of these things. Like one of them, I need to clean up my mouth. And I, I needed to clean that up. I know some of you swear. 
I know some of you swear only when you get mad. Others of you got a swearing ministry. You all need to. But as the kingdom of God, I'm just trying to help you today. See how quiet it got. <laughs> when you yield and say, Holy Spirit, this ain't like Christ. James tells us if any man claims to be religion, religious and he can't bridle his tongue, his re, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. I don't know if you'll rewatch this on Tuesday, but if you get a hold of what I'm saying and don't get offended, and see, you will get offended when Christ gets in your life. One of Jesus' nicknames is the stone of offense. <laughs> he will offend you. He offended me when I first got saved, and he began to clean me up. But what I love about God is he gave me the, the ability to live for him through the power of the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Hello, again, this ain't about celebrating your Christianity. This is learning how to live out your Christianity. It's what this series, it's what Jesus is teaching. And this is how we're going to really make a difference in our community in Southeast Michigan. He's going to do it through you. He, said he did it through the early church. But we have to have the kingdom of God in our conversations at dinner. On the way home, who are we talking about? What, what does our kids hear us say? They're not impressed with how many times you go to church and how much you give or how you're faithful. They pay attention to how you talk about the leadership, how you talk about one another, how you talk about the church, the bride of Christ. I'm just trying to help us today. I did not even mean to say any of this. For somebody must need to hear that. It's not in my notes. Amen. But we got to learn to become like Christ. And it's, there's tension in that. Have you felt it? There's tension in that. Jesus never began his public ministry... Okay, here we go. He never began his public ministry until he received his anointing as Messiah. Look at Luke chapter 4 real quick. You still got your Bibles in verse 1. It says, another then. Starting off a story with then. You never start a story off with then. We're going to talk about what happened here. He says, then Jesus, now you need to underline this, being filled with the Holy Spirit, underline being filled returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit, you should underline led by the Spirit, into the wilderness, interesting, being tempted or tested for 40 days by the devil. Verse 14, then Jesus returned, and underline, in the power of the Holy Spirit, being filled, being led, and now he has the power. Be filled, be led, and then you'll have power. Be filled, be led, then you'll have power. Why don't, why don't I have power? Are you being led by the flesh or being led by the Spirit? I'm not going to get into a big teaching on this, and, but it's all in Romans. But I want you to see there, the Holy Spirit is involved in all of Jesus' ministry. He's involved in the whole process of us becoming like Christ. He's going to convict us when we do say things we shouldn't, post things that we shouldn't. Pray first. I'm going to get a bracelet that says pray before you post. Seriously, my Lord. Pray before you post. It would just be so much better. But we have to, the Holy Spirit convicts us of it. Then we adjust to him. We repent when you fail, when you slip up, when you say something, when you do something. God, forgive me. What's happened? The Holy Spirit is working in your life. But when was he filled? When was Jesus filled? It says then he was filled. I'm not going to go back and read it. But it was at his baptism. Now, why did Jesus get baptized? This is going to be so good for some of us, all of us. He didn't get baptized to wash away his sins. Jesus was perfect. He was sinless. Jesus did get baptized for obedience. F write this down. The anointing follows obedience. The anointing follows obedience obedience when Jesus went down into the water when he came up out of the water then the Holy Spirit came and he descended down like a dove some of us want a dove to descend without us going down into the waters it follows obedience the Holy Spirit follows obedience Naaman wanted to get healed. It wasn't until he went into the water, what, seven times. Not five, not six, seven. On the seventh time when he came up, his skin was clean. But during the process of obeying God, humbling himself and getting in that dirty water, it was doing something on the inside. 
He wanted to have clean skin. God wanted him to have a clean heart. And so during the process of submitting and humbling himself by obeying and doing what God told him to do, biting the bullet, biting his tooth, his tongue, and and, and not saying what his flesh wanted to say. He received his miracle. Anointing follows obedience. Look at what Peter said in Acts 5, New Testament. Look at this. And when we are are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who believe in him. Obey him. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about your anointing. I'm talking about having that power to be able to make a difference. As these mandates lift and as we get back to normal, I'm hoping it's sooner than later, but it will happen. We will be going back and doing the things we wanted to do. I pray when we do that we will be so full of the Holy Spirit and so full of the power of God that we will come back different and not go back to the same old patterns and go back to the same old arguments and the same old problems and the same old sins and the same old habits and the same old places. Come on, somebody. But your flesh will. That's what that tug of war is. That flesh is like, ah, I don't want it. Some of you had to battle the flesh coming here today. I'm glad you did. Some of you are battling the flesh you didn't want to watch today. Want to watch whatever's on Sunday morning. I don't know, or whenever you're watching this. But I pray the Holy Spirit speaks to you and say, no, you need to hear this today. Because I want to do a work in you and then through you. So the obedience is what brings the Holy Spirit's power in your life. Obedience. What did the prophets say to Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience, obeying what God told us to do. Then lastly, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. What does that have to do with the anointing? Isn't it interesting? He's filled with the Holy Spirit, and instead of going to do ministry at that moment, God's, the Holy Spirit, it says the Spirit led him into the wilderness. Led him into a season of being testing, uh, uh, tested. Because I believe wilderness strengthens the anointing. I believe those wilderness seasons are opportunities for our anointing to increase because it's being tested. How many scriptures do we have in the New Testament? James says, count it all joy when your faith is tested because the testing of your faith produces perseverance and perseverance brings hope. It tells us in Peter that we need to rejoice when we're tested because it purifies like fire does to gold. Testing and the wilderness makes our faith come out stronger. You grow in the wilderness. This is, this is a season, this is a year of testing, big time, for all of us, for all of our faith. But you grow, you can grow. I've been saying it all year. Let's grow through 2020. The church is growing numerically. That's amazing. That's awesome. I'm so happy that God is drawing you and wanting you. But I'm saying it's not just to say, let's, we got a lot of people here. Let's say, man, we got a lot of kingdom here represented in these seats, represented in those TVs. We got a, we got a lot of kingdom here. Man, look what we can do. Look what, look what Jesus did with 12 or 11. Man, we could do so much. But you grow, your anointing grows in the wilderness. It says in Luke 1 that the child grew and became strong in spirit. Where? In the wilderness to the day of his manifestation. See, God will test us and Satan will tempt us. God will test us to bring out the good in us. Satan will tempt us to bring out the bad in us. He'll test you. He'll test you on the back row to see if you can handle the front row of ministry. It's the testing. And 2020 is the testing. I want to tell you that you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to dig in during this season and let God go deep. If you feel like God's going deep in your life and he's doing surgery, that's because he's got plans for you to go far. If he's wanting to dig deep, he's wanting you to go far. I said if he's wanting to dig deep, he's wanting you to go far. Amen. Come on, somebody get that today. Tell somebody, I'm going far. I'm going far. Do you feel the pain? I'm going far. He wants you to go far. You may be the only one that's changing the whole trajectory of your family. You say, well, Pastor Eddie, man, I can't handle these testings. They're they're serious. 
their testings are very tough. Well, let me give you this scripture. One of the first ones I came across when I was saved because I, everything was glorious when I got born again. Man, I mean, the sky was bluer. The grass was greener. I was on my way to heaven. I, 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 the, the addictions just, it was amazing how my appetites changed and, and how the change just, the power just was there. It was like, wow, I finally can break some of these things. And I, I began to go to church and I didn't, we didn't have any church clothes. I had one outfit I would wear to court and, and to court and to court and so we went to Salvation Army we got us some clothes and and my little daughters and we drove my car Buick Skylark that leaked oil and the shocks were broken so it looked like I had hydraulics pulling up in the parking lot and parked way in the back I passed up these Mercedes and these Beamers and, and I parked way in the back but I was determined that for me and my house we're gonna go to church I don't care if I gotta ride a skateboard I'm gonna be in the house of God because when there was a party going on, you didn't have to beg me to get high. I would take a taxi. We didn't even have Ubers. I would do. I would rip aluminum siding off of a house to get high. You couldn't beg me to get high because it was what I wanted to do. God ain't going to beg us to worship him. He ain't going to beg us to live for him. We need the anointing. We need the hunger. We need the passion to say, God, I need more of you. Come on. Come on if you want some of him. Come on, stand on your feet today if you want some of God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you, Holy Spirit. We need you to change us, Holy Spirit. We need you to change us, Holy Spirit. There's some marriages that are so frail right now. The enemy's getting ready to just pull you right apart into pieces. That's an attack from the enemy. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God can come right into that marriage and make it a, a ministry out of your marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me be seated. One more scripture. <laughs> then I began to go through a season of testing. Everything, I just was tested. Felt like God was a million miles away. But you know what? When you're in a test, the teacher's always silent. Some of you teachers know exactly what I'm talking about. And I realized that God was just, I was in a season. Jesus was all by himself for 40 days. He was all by himself, and my faith was being tested. God wanted to see if I was going to live for him on Friday night. He wanted to see if I was really going to live for him on Saturday night. He was going to see if I really was going to live for him when I got that check. We got a check one time, and it was the biggest check I ever had. I had to get a thumbprint from the bank to get out of the bank. And I'm telling you, that was a testing time for me. But my faith was being tested. I found walking through the mall at Southland Mall, I looked down, and there was a, a dime bag of drugs. There was drugs. In the, I never found drugs when I was doing them. <laughs> you kidding me? I looked down, and there it was. I picked it up because I wanted to smell it and make sure it was real. Because <laughs> I didn't want the devil, you know, the devil to say, it wasn't real anyway. If that was real, you wouldn't have done that. So I said, don't smell too much. That flesh would be like, hey. You better play it off and act like you got to run to your car real quick. It's amazing how fast the enemy will give you a reason to skip church, to not read your Bible, to not get on your face. It don't take much. Sometimes a dog just barking. Sometimes that neighbor pulling up. But I smelled it. I looked at it, and I said, not today, Satan. I threw it right in the ashtrays. Remember they had ashtrays in Southland Mall? They had a garbage can. You were with me. I was ahead of them, though, because I remember I picked it up. I said, what am I going to do? And I threw it away. It was testing. Do you know what that, them little tests did for me? I got a call right before, holi right before the holiday season. I would always go to this big party, New Year's Eve party. It was the biggest party of the year. I got a call. Hey, Eddie, you coming? I said, well, I'd love to tell you that I answered him with power, hallelujah, and then King James, and, and the anointing was all over me. But at that moment, I felt like God had abandoned me. I felt like I was all by myself. None of my prayers were getting answered anymore. Everybody was turning on me. I was getting blamed for things at work that didn't happen to me. I didn't bump that bumper. Everything, everything was falling apart. And then he calls right at the same time, and he says, are you going to go to this party? And I remember a lump in my throat, alone, in my kitchen in Melvindale. I looked out of the window, and I looked, and I said, I've been going to church, trying to get my life right. I'm not going to be there this year. And he goes, okay, we'll see. And I said, all right. 
I want you to know that that was one of the biggest decisions that I made, just as important for me when I first got saved that it was when I was all by myself. But can I tell you that right after that, right after that, I, re I got filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit began to come into my life and God began to bless me just like the dove came down on Jesus that's the manifestation for Jesus for you he'll give you a prayer language when the Holy Spirit comes upon you you'll begin to pray in the heavenly language and it begin to flow out of your spirit you'll begin to have a feeling I can't explain to you what's happening the kingdom of God has come upon you and you're being filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of it. And Jesus returned in power, and you will return in power. We submit, we, we obey the Lord. You might be in a season of testing right now. If you take the way out that God provides, you will return in power. But if you give in, that same old habit, just talking about people could be something like, don't have to be drugs. You could be wearing a skirt down to here, your hair up in the bun, no makeup, no rings, and be talking about everybody in the church. God says, these six things I hate. Pride, one that sows discord. You know, sexual sin is not even mentioned in that list. Drunkenness is not even in that list. Racism is not even in that list. And those are awful sins. But God said, this one, I can't take it when they sow discord and they talk about people. I'm just trying to help you today. The Spirit will lead you into the wilderness. Your obedience will determine when you get out of the wilderness. The children of Israel didn't get that memo. They spent 40 years going around the same old mountain, same old mountain, trying to help us today. I don't want to go through 2020 again. So can we please all obey what God's telling us to do? Can we all say, man, let's get along for real? Let, let's, let's drop our biases. Let's drop the way we feel. I don't like that church. I don't like this church. I don't like that president. I don't like this song. We all got our biases. Can we, can we just drop them and pray for one another and say, let a spirit of unity come in this place? Come on, worship team. We need to praise God in this place. Come on, worship team. We need to praise God in this place. Come on. Come on, worship team. We need to praise God in this place. Come on, we need to shake off the religion today. We need to shake off the flesh today. Come on. If you're at home, you need to stand up. Tell the kids, go in a room or something. Tell them to join you. We need the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in your life today. If you want it, if you don't, you can just turn it off and we'll do whatever. It's raining, so you can't do a whole lot. How, how about that? Some of you in here, I don't have time to theologically prove and persuade to you about the Holy Spirit. It's real. Believe it. Receive it. And go on. Some of us don't know how to work our iPhone, but we still use it. God does something we don't understand. No, it ain't God. We need to stop that. I don't know what everything's going on, but I do know that the kingdom of God is real. The kingdom of God has changed my life. And the kingdom of God has changed your life and your life. But he wants to go deeper. And you can only go deeper with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And you will only receive it if you want it. Obedience. You got some things in your life? Stop it. It's hindering your anointing. Gossiping hinders your anointing. It hinders your reputation. The language and the way you talk about people, your kids hear that. Your family hears that. And then we want them to come to church and do what we're doing. They're confused. Samson is the example. He was anointed. But his problem with the ladies hindered his anointing. Cut off his anointing. But there's grace. Maybe that's you, man. You blew it during 2020. You ain't been good in quarantine. You know that. Now's your chance to get humble before God. Because Samson did. He got all alone down in the bottom of that dungeon. And he began to push that millstone. He began to remember how good it was to be in the house of God. 
He remembered the chill bumps and the do you feel that what I feel right now? He remembered how good it felt when the dove and the presence of the Holy Ghost came upon him. And he said, God, I don't want this junk no more in my life. And the Bible says this, his hair began to grow. Hello, Bocota. I don't need to tell you what that means. That anointing began to come back. Come on, some of you need to get that anointing back. Come on, you're right now. I can see you at the edge of your couch, just tears right now. The anointing is coming upon you right now. Come on, right here in this room, the presence of God is on your life. And this would be the time when I would call you up, and I, 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 I'm so inside wanting to have altar ministries. But you know what? I don't have to lay hands on you. In the day of Pentecost, no one laid hands on no one. The Holy Spirit came. Acts chapter 10, while Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell. You can get filled right here in your room, in your room at home, right here in this place. Come on, lift your hands to God right now. You want to get filled? Come on, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him, I need the anointing. Come on, tell him. I want the anointing. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you're watching right now. Holy Spirit, fall in that room. Come on, ask him. Ask him. Feel me. Feel me. Come on, feel me. Come on, you got that prayer language. Begin to speak it out. Pray it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him stir your heart today. Stir your spirit today. We need that anointing. We need that anointing. Hallelujah. Some of you are in a relationship that God said, that's not who I brought in your life. They are hindering my calling on your life. They're hindering my anointing on my life. Don't be afraid. But break it off. What I have for you is better. Some of you picked up some habits in 2020. God said, put it down. It's going to bite you. Put it down. That's not what I have for your life. Put it down. Pick up my word. Pick up your shield of faith. Pick up your sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. I prophesied this to you today. And those dead, dry bones are going to come alive. Come on, come on, ask Him to fill you. Let the Holy Spirit, He's moving, He's moving. He's moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Let Him come upon you right now. Come on. Let Him come upon you right now. Let Him come upon young people. Go after Him. Go after Him. Go after Him right now. Come on. You need, to, you need more room? Get more room. There's room up here. If you need more room, come on, I'm serious. receive if you're all in fear. You won't. I'm not going to make you do anything. Listen to the Holy Spirit today. Pray for healing. God, I pray for healing of your people against this virus. I pray for every person in this room, every person watching. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing. I pray for healing right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Protection, God, against this virus, Lord. We will be smart. Lord, we want your protection on our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on. Worship. Worship. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's surrender to them.
Fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord. Fill me, come on, fill me, Lord. Hallelujah. Fill my wife, fill my husband, fill my kids. Come on, fix my marriage. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hover over this place, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, more, more, more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you are new Christians. You've been baptized. Let him baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire right now. Fire right now. Fire right now. Fire right now, right in your soul. Come on, fire right now in your soul. Come on, hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost if you feel that language coming out. You don't know what it is. That's the Holy Spirit praying that right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. He's all over some of you. I know he's he's feeling you right now. Come on, yield to him. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. right now. You can get healed right now. I pray someone's ear can get healed right now. You got an ear problem. I pray for healing to come to your ear right now. Maybe you're watching. There's an ear in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray you open that ear. Do a miracle, God. Do a miracle, I pray. Hallelujah. Right now. Come on, receive it. Receive it. Stay. All you got to have is stay. Hallelujah. Somebody's ear in the name of Jesus.
the glory. Come on, let's sing that. Let us become. She was bleeding. We began to pray. And at that very moment when we were praying, the bleeding stopped. She was restored and was healed. I'm just telling you, man, miracles happen when you believe. When you believe. Just believe it and receive it right now. Hallelujah. For some of you, you may not need a physical healing. You just need to become more like Christ and it's been a hindrance for you. You you haven't done it. You said a prayer. You've been watching online. Ain't been no change and you know it. Well, it can change today. Today, he wants you to change. The goal isn't to become like anyone but like Christ. To become like Christ. That's Christianity. It's to become like Christ. And it's a journey You're not going to do it overnight, but it won't begin at all unless you yield to him and let him begin to change you. That's where that anointing comes. And then as you pass these tests, he's saying no to the devil, saying no to that. And for some of you, it may be a party. It may be a Friday night. It may be a a vice. Others of you may be a conversation. Others of you may be a relationship, whatever. Get prayer. Anything that hinders your walk with God is not of God. You don't need a list. Ask yourself, what what is... Some of you have been gaming for three days. You're playing video games too much. You can be anything. You know who you are. How much time... We're living in the days you've got to live for Christ. You need to have that anointing in your life every day. And you only get it by spending time with Him at His feet. It don't have to be three hours. It can, but it don't have to. Sometime today... After the Lions beat the Saints, I don't know. They need an anointing to win. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want you to think that you got to walk around with a Bible neither. You live it out. Jesus sat with sinners and he ate with sinners. How did he do that? He was anointed. Spend time with God today. Hallelujah. Let that anointing grow. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Stir up the Holy Spirit. Every day, do it Monday, because guess what? As powerful as this is, when you wake up Monday, it's like the night of the living dead. That flesh gets right back where it was. Right back to your little habits, whatever. Whatever. Let's rather scroll. Let's rather keep our streak going. Get your streak going in this. Man shall not. You know what you do in the wilderness? In the wilderness, you learn to eat on the word. You learn that man does not live by bread alone. In the wilderness, you learn 
but you live by every word of God. Isn't that what Jesus did in the wilderness? That's how you learn in the wilderness. Some of you, you're in a wilderness and you're going, when am I going to get out? God says, when you eat your food, when you eat your broccoli, when you learn to eat the word. Better say amen, I'm going to preach for another hour. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord right now. Father, in Jesus' name. You said the good work that you have begun in us, you will complete it. And I pray the good work that you've done today, right now, in this first Sunday in October 2020, in people's lives, I pray that you will complete it. We yield and let you, we allow you. I pray for hunger to come alive in your people. Hunger for your word. A desire for more of you, God. In Jesus' name, let your power and your anointing rest upon us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Well, I'm Pastor Eddie, and I just want to say thank you for watching our service. Hopefully it's been a blessing to you, and it's encouraged you, uh, helped build you up, or help you just grow in your faith. Uh, I'm standing here in our cafe that we just opened. It's called The Stream, and uh, this is directly connected to our missions ministry here. So it's coffee with a cause. And every month, all proceeds will go to help support a domestic missionary that we support or are involved with. For instance, the month of September, all proceeds go to Convoy of Hope to help with the Hurricane Laura relief in Louisiana. So I just want to make you aware of that. It's open before and after every service, which we're meeting together right now on Wednesdays at 7 and Sunday mornings at 1030. Come on in, get a cup of coffee, and help support a great work at the same time. Also, this message that you just watched will be available on our YouTube channel on Tuesday. Every Tuesday, we upload a new message or a new sermon uh, there. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and head over there and hit subscribe. And that little icon, that little bell icon, that'll, that'll notify you of any uh, new updates and things that we got coming because we are going to have a busy fall uh, as we are already planning and looking forward to it. So again, just say God bless you from my heart to yours. Hopefully you've been blessed and encouraged. We'll see you again soon. Amen.